What click? The Eversharp Schick Injector Razor, made by Eversharp. Manufacturers of Eversharp Schick Injector Razors and Blades and famous Eversharp Precision Writing Instruments. Hideous things come out of the darkness to prowl the tortured earth. Evil hands stretch forth to seize. Evil eyes are watching. Unholy voices whisper and quarrel in the fearful silence. Death stalks. Loathsome, horrible death. Dare you put out your lights and listen to Boris Karloff in the story of horror in the deepening darkness? Dare you listen to... Lights out! I'm glad you brought up the question of ethics, Ed. Sometimes I think science is too ethical. Stands in the way of research. Mm, I don't know, David. Take your work, for example. It's wonderful, but you have to be very cautious. I think working with monkeys is about as far as you should go right now. Oh, but Ed, David is past that stage. Why not show Ed the one you worked on today, darling? If you'd like to see it, Ed, it's right in the lab. Yes, I would. I saw it last night after you injected the poison. <laughs> I'll get it, David. Thank you, dear. It's in the second cage. Mm, Ruth's a wonderful girl, David. Must be a big help to you in your work. Don't know what I'd do without her. But if she ever gets too interested in pure science, <laughs> I'm going to... I, I could, I'm going to lock her out of the lab and just make her go back to being a wife. <laughs> How do you find time for a wife? Now, look here. All you practicing surgeons think the research man is a machine. Not me, Ed. Ruth means more to me than all the discoveries I might make. Her happiness is all I live and work for. Well, I can't say that I blame him. She's a very charming person. Ah, here he is. Same one you saw last night, Ed. Stone dead. And there he is, just as healthy and alive as any other monkey. Why, it's amazing, David. Naturally, I've followed all the experiments along this line, but you seem to have progressed much farther. David can't go any farther with animals. He's ready for the next step. And he can do it. Well, I'm all for research, David. But you have a moral obligation in this sort of thing. How do you know it'll work with human beings? Oh, you're a surgeon yourself, Ed. You know that human beings are animals just like all the subjects I've used. I know it'll work. Well, knowing it won't get you far with society, you'll have to submit proof. I know that. And I've tried every way I can think of to get a human being to demonstrate on. You've tried insane asylums, penitentiaries, everywhere. No one will listen to me. Well, in a way, you can't blame them. Even to me, with my training, the idea seems, well... Blasphemous. My dear Ed, you can't stop scientific progress because of a so-called moral concept. Besides, what could be less blasphemous than a triumph over death? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't see it that way. I wouldn't want to try it on me. When I'm dead, I want to stay dead. Oh, that's foolish, Ed. If I die first, I want David to use me for a subject. <laughs> Don't look so startled, Ed. She's always been my strongest supporter, but I'm not going to use her as a subject. I like her too well as a wife. <laughs> Still, it gives me the shivers to hear you talk that way, Ruth. But why? I've seen David's work grow to where the technique is perfect. Before long, his experiments will be recognized by the whole medical world. And if I can help him achieve that goal, I'm willing to do anything. Living or dead. I mean it. <laughs> She said she wanted to do it, Ed, living or dead. David, you're surely not going to hold it to that. Not now. Of course I am. She meant it. But I called you over here tonight, Ed, because I need help. Don't tell me that. But I want you to help me bring Ruth's... To bring her here? That's exactly what I mean. David, will you help me? Or must I bribe some stranger? David, why don't you give this thing up? It's... It's inhuman, Ed. If I succeed, I'll have Ruth back. Don't you see how much it means? Well, yes, if you're successful. Oh, I've no doubt about that. Look, I've got my laboratory record. 714 times I performed the experiment on guinea pigs, rabbits, monkeys. 714 times it's been successful. Don't you see? But, David, this is no laboratory experiment. Ruth was your wife. She is my wife. The only woman I ever loved. That's why I want to bring her back here and start her breathing and living again. There's an ugly name for what you're asking me to do, David. I know. Grave robbery. But there's a better name for it, Ed. 
death robbery. We'll rob old man death. Kick the door shut. Uh, on the operating table. I must say you are completely equipped. It's surgery, just as well as a lab. Everything we need is here. Yeah. Well, it's done. Not yet. You mean you want me to stay? Ed, listen. Ever since Ruth, well, I guess I've leaned on you for everything. I won't ask you to stay, but I do need you. Just a little longer. All right, David. I'll stay. Ruth will be the first to thank you when we succeed. David, I'll always doubt this until I see Ruth living, breathing, smiling again. It won't be long. Just a matter of 15 or 20 minutes. If nothing happens. What will you do if your operation doesn't work? Then you'll have just one more job to do as my friend. And that? Will be to bury both of us. Oh, now, look, David. If Ruth isn't alive again within a few minutes, I'll have lost her forever. And I'll have proved that my whole life's work is useless. I'll have reason enough to use any of a dozen tricks that any good surgeon knows. End the whole business. Oh, but don't look so horrified, Ed. We won't fail. Let's begin. I should remind you once more, David, that you're usurping powers that belong to God Almighty. I like to think that Providence has wisely held back the knowledge of things like this until we knew how to use them. And I know how. Hand me that large beaker. All right. I'm not going to back out on you, David. What shall I do? Do. You'll work as you haven't worked in surgery before. Thank heavens I've got your skill on my side. Now then, first strap the spigot manometer on her arm. I just happened to think of something. Keep moving. This is all a matter of timing. But, David... Here are your instruments. And I want the incision right here where I'm shaving the hair. Make a small incision just at the fontanelle while I prepare the solution. David... Have you considered... Please, work fast. But Dave, what? She was embalmed, you know. Of course I know that. I have something to replace the blood and, and to counteract the fluid. It's ghastly. Finish the cut. I know what I'm doing. Well, that's all for the incision, but after all... Oh, work nice. Now cut away the dura mater. Entirely? Leave the brain exposed? Yes, yes, I'll fix that. I've done it 700 odd times. Well, this is no guinea pig or monkey. Well, I hardly need reminding. Sorry. What's that? The compound I've synthesized myself. What is it? I call it digamma paradami. Oh, I know that isn't chemically correct. But it's as close as I can get to it. I knew that something like it must exist. It took three years to track it down. Took me that long to make the first drop of it. Oh, you know what you're doing, all right? Yes, I do. Now, then, if you're finished, take the leads from that storage battery there and attach the positive to the silver plate on the shelf. Put that at her feet. I feel as if I were doing something unholy. Place the tip of the negative in the incision you made in the skull. Be sure the tip of the wire actually... actually penetrates the pyre mater. David, what if you bring her back? I will bring her back. But what if you bring her back and find she comes back without her soul? Her soul? You're a surgeon, and you believe in a soul? Well, I hesitate to say there is no such thing. You've seen a good many deaths, haven't you? Have you ever seen any evidence that the soul escapes at death? Perhaps I couldn't recognize the evidence. Let's put it this way, then. If there is any soul, it either leaves the body or stays with it at death. Now, no reputable surgeon or physician has ever been able to report the slightest evidence of the soul having left the body. So the soul, if there is a soul, must stay with the body, a part of it. I'm ready now. If you've finished. Everything's set. Good. Close that switch then at the battery. Watch the meter and keep the current between plus and minus five of 150. There's a rheostat on the edge of the table. All right? All right. Now, I'm going to inject 10 cc's of adrenaline in the brachial artery. Adrenaline? Adrenaline and something else. There. God, she's beautiful, Ed. Yes. She was. She is. You'll see her in a few minutes, just as she was. I wonder what you'll have to tell us. Nothing. Death is only a transcendental sleep. 
Do you really believe that? Oh, well, what's the difference? How's the current? Well, let's see. Well, it's jumped to 180. Good. Bring it back to 150. That's the result of the injection. On a dead body? Mm. Let's say suspended animation. There are still a few things in surgery you don't know, aren't there? I never dreamed of a reaction like that. I'll show you more. Help me swing this lamp over here. But let the Amita go. It'll hold steady for a minute now. But it might jump. No, it won't. I've been all through this before. The reactions are exactly the same as the others. And this lamp? X-rays? No, it's a modification of the cathode ray. And just another of my developments. I call these our theta rays. Why do you call them that? Well, most rays are named for the first few letters in the Greek alphabet, alpha, beta, gamma, and so on. Well, that explains theta. Didn't you say our theta? Yes. But theta was called the letter of death by the ancient Greeks. Well, that's right. It was the first letter in the word thanatos. Death. Well, I see. A theta without death. <laughs> Maybe I was too sentimental. Maybe. At least human for once. Let's not argue. Here goes the ray. Now, quickly, the solution. Inject it? No, pump it. I built this pump especially for it. There's the pump switch, Ed. You? Yeah. Turn it on and watch the air meter. Okay. It's jumping. How far? 155. Let it go. 160. 170. Hold it there. It'll stay there now. Listen carefully. Yes. As soon as I turn off the pump, I want stigma readings. But there won't be any blood pressure. Wait and see. Give me a reading each time I ask for it and take them carefully. Are you ready? Oh, this is fantastic. I'm ready. Okay. Reading. Systolic <laughs> zero. Diastolic zero. That's all right. It will take a few seconds. Now. Forty. My God. Diastolic. Hurry. Zero. I ought this valve is still open. I'll turn off the ray. Reading. Forty-eight. Over forty-two. David, not yet. Now the stopwatch. Seven seconds after I say go, I want this systolic. Now you have it? Right. Ready. Now, go. Sixty. Go. That's what it should be. Lord. Look at my hand. Well, I don't wonder. Oh, darling, just a few more minutes. All right, Ed. Now the ray again. We'll know the answer very soon. Now let's return to Lights Out as Boris Karloff stars in the conclusion of Death Robbery. How long do you use the ray this time, David? Not long. Give me a reading. Seventy. Diastolic. Sixty-eight. Now. David. A hundred and eighteen. Seventy-six. Close. Now. A hundred and twenty. That's it. Eighty. The stethoscope. Quick. Still asleep? Yes, almost a coma. She's all right otherwise. As far as I can tell, her respiration's normal, pulse just a tiny bit fast, and the reflexes slow, but apparently all right. David, I... 
I feel I must apologize to you. Apologize? Why? Well, for doubting you, I suppose. <laughs> you learn to believe me. Very calm in the face of all this. Do you realize that you've performed a miracle? A miracle? I brought my wife back to me, as I promised her. It's, it's an unholy thing, but... But we've conquered death. Is that unholy? We have conquered death. May God forgive us. You should only wait now. How long has she been asleep? Let me see. Eleven hours. Hasn't spoken at all? Not since that first scream, when she fell asleep. Have you given her anything? Just a few cups of brandy. Have you tried to wake her? No, but I think I'll try now. Oh, wait a minute before you do. Why? Well, I hate to keep harping on this business about a soul, David. I realize this is no place for a philosophic discussion... But I can't help wondering why Ruth screamed when she first came back to life. I think there's a logical explanation. After all, it must have been a physical shock. Well, that's true. It must also be true that there was a great mental shock involved. I think that's why she screamed. And I'm wondering whether there's been a permanent effect on her mind. Not as I prefer to think of it, her soul. Oh, you're simply borrowing trouble, Ed. I've never seen any sign of permanent damage in my other experiments. Don't forget that Ruth was a human being. Well, there's only one way to find out. I'm going to wake her. You're, you're not afraid? Afraid? Of what? Ruth. Ruth. Wake up, darling. Oh, God. Ruth, dear. It's David speaking. Wake up, dearest. Ruth. Ruth. Ah! Oh, darling. No wonder it scared a poor girl. Ruth, it's it's David, dear. I kept my promise and you're alive again. Oh, you're all right, honey. It's David, you're you're Ruth. Ruth. David, what's the matter? God is her mind. No, David. Her soul. David, you'd better go out for a little exercise now. I'll stay here with her. I'll stay while you go out and walk around a bit. You've been there with us since 8 o'clock last night without any letter. Go on, I'll stay. Ed. I know, old boy. I'd give anything myself if we could undo what we've done, but... Ed, what can I do? Well, there may be something. Let's try an experiment when she wakes up again. What kind of an experiment? Well, let's see if we can talk to her. Get her to say anything. If we can get a flicker of intelligence, maybe we can teach her... Build up from a small fragment. Maybe it might work. I'm going to wake her up and try it. Well, not now. Why don't you take a walk? Relax a little. And get something to eat while you're out. Eat, I can't eat. I'm going to wake her. Ruth. Ruth. David. Why not let her sleep? She's waking up now. Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Are you waking up? Poor child. Oh, child. There. She repeats after me. A little. Maybe it will work, Ed. Ruth. Uh, David. Uh, it works. Seems true. Ruth, say I want a glass of water. Seems true. <laughs> I want a glass of water. Uh, it's too long for the... Ruth. Say, Ruth. Uh, loves. Uh, David. David. <laughs> Ruth loves David. Ruth loves David. Ruth loves David. Ruth loves David. <laughs> Ruth loves David. <laughs> it's working, Maybe. But what is she thinking? I don't know. No, no. <laughs> Ruth, stop it. Stop it. Wait a minute, old man. Ruth loves David. Too much for you, tired as you are. Go on, I'll take a little walk and I'll work with it for a while. Stop. Your nerves won't take Stop. some of this. Oh, I guess you're right, Ed. I can't Ruth think of it all. I'll be right there. Fine, fine. Uh-huh. I'll take good care of her. Uh-huh. See what I can find out. Be patient. Uh-huh. Don't worry. Uh-huh. Well. And you get something to eat while you're out. Oh, I know. Fine. Poor guy. This is really rough on him. Rough on him. <laughs> Ruth. Ruth. We're kidding ourselves. There's nothing there. She's a parrot. Ruth. Put on that scalpel. Uh-huh. Hurt yourself. Ruth, stay away. <laughs> Don't put it down. Think of David. David! 
For God's sake, what happened? Scalpel. I'll get something and fix you right up. Wait. No use. Now look, Dr. Connery. No hope. Ed. All right, Doctor. Your diagnosis is correct. Murder to the left. Who's hiding? Watch out. No. No soul. She'll kill you, too. What have I done, Ed? Everything I've done is wrong. No. Wonderful technique, Doctor. Congratulations. Ed. Ruth. She's somewhere in the house. What if she gets out? A scalpel in her hands. There's been enough damage. Ruth! in the lab. No. No, there's nothing new. Just an experiment. No. Like so many experiments, it, it just didn't work out. 